All right, before we go any farther in today's video, today's video is brought to you by Lure Lock. They're super bad at the bone tackle boxes, made in the USA. They have super secure latches, and on the inside it has super cool tack logic technology. That's the sticky stuff in here. It doesn't leave residue on your baits, doesn't heat up in the sun, doesn't leave scent, and it literally holds your baits in place. Oh gosh. Unreal. Bottom line, these tackle boxes are super hardcore, guys. If you want to get 30% off any of these boxes, check out LureLock.com. Link in description. Use code SOBE30 to get 30% off your order. And um, yeah, pick up some new tackle boxes today. All right, back to the video. What happens when I get this close? Is this okay for me to get this close? Yeah. It's okay if, as long as I'm right here. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode. My name is Sam Sobe. Um, over the past couple weeks, I've been doing a lot of videos out of my brand new boat, and I've been loving it, and I've been getting a lot of requests down below in the comment section, like, do a full boat review, kind of go inside how you laid it out, how you tricked it out, and I'm like, yes, absolutely, I'll do that. So. That's this video here. We're gonna go through kind of everything impromptuly, uh, kind of how I laid out the boat. And it's not just gonna be me showing you stuff. I have a lot of questions for you guys, how you've tricked out your boats, ideas, stuff like that. Either way, come with me, walk with me, talk with me, and let's check out the AVX 1980 by Vexus. Okay, so I think like three weeks back, I purchased the AVX 1980 up at Intune Marine, and it was just like, it's unbelievable. I'll get into details later, but uh, either way, I purchased this boat at Intune Marine. Make sure you check them out, Richmond, Minnesota. And um, they sell new boats, used boats, they customize boats. Give them a call, I'll link them down below. These guys are amazing. And um, yeah, let's get into the boat tour. Okay, so if you pan around here, you can see, Besides the boat, I keep it underneath like this tarp shed, and I got this from my good buddy Kyle. Awesome to park the boat under here, that way it doesn't get wet. There's not like cottonwood and sticks and everything that fly into it, because when you got a new or used boat, keeping it clean is like, you, you, you will want to keep your boat clean. So yeah, enough about the tarp. Basically, we'll start from the front and work back. In the front of the boat, I got the Minn Kota Altrex. I have a Helix 10. This is my same trolling motor, my same graphs I had on my other boat and I love it so much. As far as spot lock goes and just kind of the communication between the trolling motor and the graphs, it's it's amazing. I would recommend Hummingbird Minn Kota to anybody. So, look at this nice carpet. This is nice. I vacuum this probably like two to three times a week and that's probably one of the biggest problems with a brand new boat is you feel like Dude, I gotta keep this thing nice and that's not a problem or anything It's not it's not a problem to keep your stuff nice But like when it is so clean when you pick it up You're like I have to just maintain this level of beautifulness in the boat And that's what I've been trying to do so like I've been doing a really good job of spraying it down Vacuuming it just keeping it clean because I want to keep the suck really nice um, If you love your boat whether that be a kayak a bass boat or a ski boat if you love your boat um, It's kind of fun to clean it. So we'll like we'll actually start opening stuff up here. This is the cooler I just got a bunch of waters and Gatorades and kind of over the past couple weeks, I've filled it all the way up to the top with ice. I throw a big ice container in here a lot. I just like refreeze old bottles of juice and stuff and kind of cut back on buying ice. But um, the cooler works amazing. It's like insulated. It's all like suction locked. It's, it's pretty bad at bone cooler. Over here in the left side, this is like the smallest compartment up front. I've got my plastics. And basically I just like throw in plastics that I think I'm gonna use for the day or the week or the trip. Swim baits, a lot of Kytex, stuff like that. Little bins and containers that I like, I put my trailers in. Cinco, these are Ned rigs, these are trick worms, ribbon tail worms, tubes. I was smallmouth fishing so I grabbed a bunch of tubes. I know there's a lot of videos out there where like people customize little like, kind of Tupperware containers. Like they'll take tie wraps, put it here so that they can open it up and it never really breaks. If you guys have any sort of like cheap way to kind of organize tackle or any little hacks like that, please comment them down below. I'm open to anything. I want to trick this boat out and make it like the most efficient I can. Another thing I like about this boat is it's um, single council. That means it only has one council here by the driver. Uh, there's nothing here because I like this to be nice and open. It's more open for fishing. You can sit down here, you can rig your rods, you can do whatever. Uh, if you're in the market of buying a new boat, this is just something that I like. Um, if you're in the market of buying a used boat, it's all personal preference, really. The middle container is the largest. It can hold eight foot six rods. Uh, I don't really use it for rods. I put some big swim bait rods in here, but I basically use this for just all the tackle and junk I have. Um, I pack a lot of stuff with me. I don't know where I'm gonna go, where I'm gonna end up, what the bite's gonna be like. Check it out in here. This first thing I have in here is a cool easy cam post. This is kind of what I put my big camera on in the back. I can link this down below if you guys are interested in filming uh, inside your boats. Basically just attaches to the 
the little seat holder back there and um, it holds up my DSLR. Besides that, my net fits in here. I don't have it in there right now. Um, I've got life jackets. Uh, when I got this boat, I kind of bit the bullet and bought some really expensive life jackets. I've never in my life spent more than like $20 on a life jacket uh, until these and I was like I can't believe I just did that but um after I did I started wearing them a lot more and I got a bunch of buddies that like they have horror stories of flying out of the boat or during tournaments they hit a wave or they come around getting a boat crash like this year I'm really trying to make a point to wear my life jacket stay safe if you look inside here basically uh, this is where I keep my terminal tackles where I keep jigs this is where I keep crankbaits I keep like some spare reels I'll keep like, I got like my little terminal tackle here. I've got little things of like crankbaits. I also keep like my leader line down in here. It's so like little finesse lines, stuff like that. This is all just basically so I can grab and go or if I break off a leader, I can just tie it up really quick. Um, besides that, like I said, I have like my lights in here. I keep a couple swim bait rods. And also this is kind of like my, my junk drawer. I need like, I need like an open container that I can keep kind of check it out check it out in here this is like my junk drawer that i can keep stuff that i like need on hand quick like these are just like i'll turn tackle swim jigs white swim jig football head jig another swim jig a chatter bait more chatter baits like i just have these kind of lures on hand in the spring just because these are really good spring lures and it seems like if one pops off or i need to tie something on it's like <laughs> all right this kind of brings me to my next thing as far as like tackle organization goes um for a long long time i looked for like good tackle boxes that i liked um, affordable, very durable, and um, kind of unique. You can see in here, I've got everything from old gander boxes, different things like this. Like they're all they're all broken and beat. some are old. They're all warped. Like I just I didn't have good tackle boxes for a long time, and then I started experimenting with these tackle boxes called Lure Lock. I've had these for like a year or two now, and I really really like them. And I just recently bought a whole bunch more. You can see that this is just kind of all my terminal tackle. Basically, they're really like sturdy, waterproof, of course, and they've got extremely unique technology kind of on the inside. I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll show you guys. Over the years of fishing, whether it was kayak fishing or in my old boats, I felt like I was never really organized. So this year I'm kind of taking the liberty. I'm buying new tackle boxes, I'm getting organized, and um, I just I just want to be efficient on the water. I felt like I've never really been extremely efficient on the water as far as my gear goes. So this is kind of where these lure locks come into play. But the cool thing about these tackle boxes is the technology inside them. I think it's called tack technology. It's basically like a soy based gel that um, is extremely sticky and it doesn't like transfer stickiness to your lures or anything like that. It doesn't transfer scent. Um, it doesn't heat up or get sticky in the warm sunlight. Like whatever this is made out of is truly incredible stuff. I'll just show you right here. Where's like a lure? Once you have your dividers in, whether you're putting jigs in there or plastics or hooks or anything, you can place them in their own area and like, look at that. <laughs> this stuff is really cool. So yeah, besides the inside, basically, they secure really nice. They're extremely watertight, um, very tight latches. As far as like their dividers go, like they're easy breakaway. Uh, if you guys like this stuff, if you want to check these out, use code SOBE30. I'll link it down below. Get 30% off any lure lock stuff. Um, quality tackle box made in the USA, and um, it's pretty unique, that whole tack technology. So yeah, let's continue on. Okie dokie. Over to the actual rod locker. Um, this is something that was huge to me. Uh, I think this is seven foot six over here. This rod locker gets seven foot six or seven foot eight. I'm not totally sure, but in my old boat, the Red Rocket 1.0, the rod locker was like six foot 11 or seven foot. So basically none of my rods fit in there. So I just use it as tackle storage. But to have a rod locker that I can put all my rods in and lock it up is just, it's incredible. I don't know how many I have in here, but as far as these tubes go, if I have rod socks on them, like I can fit like two or three rods in each hole. So I don't, I think I have like 20 some rods in here. Some are mine, some are Brock's. Either way, that's super sweet. Moving on to right here, the step box. This is kind of where I keep just my day box, just random things, uh, keep some tools. This doesn't latch down. This just opens up nice and easy like this. And inside here, I basically have just like a box of tools, like hook sharpeners, scale, sharpies, screwdrivers, some nippers. Ooh chartreuse marker if you guys don't know what this is i'm a super large advocate of like tipping all my plastics with chartreuse dye or this little zoom marker and it doesn't look like much now 
but when you throw the sucker in the water like this illuminates a ton and it looks a little bit more natural than like those plastics you buy with just chartreuse tips on them so i love this sucker um besides that off to the right we've got some giants kettle roast original sunflower seeds these are bee rocks and also we've got some homemade puppy chow that brock's mom made for us so shout out lisa schwarzkopf pop this out on the boat mint that's just like a really simple box i don't keep too much in there but um there is like an open space right here obviously where i sit and do a lot of rigging but there's an open space here that i feel like i can make some modifications to and that's one of the worst parts about like having a, a new boat or new to you boat is you want it to be yours and you want to make modifications but i'm like I'm scared to drill into this or do anything. I'm not extremely handy, but I still like, I've got some ideas to kind of trick this out. Here's one of my ideas. This is a magnetic tool holder I recently got. This is an ice fishing company clam. And I want to put that either like right here or put it on the side or put it either there. You guys have any suggestions too of like little things I can put here or there or there or there to like really trick this boat out and make it my own. Um, please comment them down below. I'm open ears. I'm game for anything. All right, moving to the back. This is like a lifesaver to me. I can't tell you how many pairs of sunglasses, wallets, phones I've lost from like keeping that junk all over and then we're just running a gun and we go and take off and it flies out. Like having a container right here that I can just kind of put the most important stuff to me, like my wallet, like my phone, like my shades, is super convenient. So inside here, I basically have my little iPilot controller. I've got a pair of shades. I put the keys in here when I'm driving. Um, my wallet usually goes in here. I keep a little mini speaker in here. All my day stuff that I really, really care about, I keep in here, I latch it up. It's all safe when I'm driving. So over here, I've got my bilge, my internal lights, my navigational lights. Um, I've got everything for my live holes here. I can manually turn it on. I can turn it on time. USB connectors. It's nice to have a USB port. Plug my phone in. Plug GoPro batteries in. Another 12 volt outlet right here. That's super convenient. Another cool thing too is especially having a gas pedal. Like if somebody short comes and drives the boat, it actually has a seat adjuster in a boat. In the back of the boat, we have two containers and then the live wells. These are like tournament grade live wells, super giant. I haven't really got a chance to use these too much because um, Minnesota's still catch and release. When I was in Wisconsin, it's catch and release. And I haven't really like kept any fish in here yet. I've just been bass fishing, catching them, throwing them back. So I'm pumped to use the live wells. I'm pumped for tournament Tuesday. This boat's gonna be like freaking dialed come tourney season. All right, so the back container right here, I basically just keep day stuff in. Um, this is vinegar and water. This is what I wipe down the boat with every day. Um, I keep like an extra sweatshirt in here, an extra buff, some Lowry's and oil just in case I do a little catch and cook. In here we had a bunch of bags of chips and snacks and granola bars and stuff like that. Brock ate that all, so I ate some too. I'm just kidding. Besides that, I keep wheel chucks. Um, if we're going stopping at a campsite or anything like that, I can unhook the boat. I have wheel chucks on the go. If we're going through a Taco Bell drive through and the boat doesn't fit, I can unhook it on the go. These puppies have came into use like a lot over the past couple weeks. Kind of due to Taco Bell. Besides that, I keep a power pack in here. This is my Dakota Lithium power pack. Sucker's super cool. Uh, in my old boats, my batteries would die. Sometimes I wouldn't be able to get on the trailer, get my motor back up. Um, besides this, like powering phones and other camera equipment, I've actually like jumped my boat with this and like just hooked everything up to this before so this sucker's nice i keep my drone back here i keep most of my camera stuff actually out about in the boat but besides like my drone or maybe a couple different hard cases i'll throw back in here but yeah that's just kind of like a day case all right so last and final container i put really important stuff i never take this out of the boat um basically rain gear this is brock's rain suit here here's my blackfish rain gear i got a brand new suit this year this is the torrent it's a pretty affordable suit um i think it's their most affordable suit they make and um to be honest i think it's extremely comfortable so if you guys are in kind of the market for a new rain suit i'll link this down below too these have come in handy like way more than i've ever used rain gear in my whole entire life fishing i feel like i've filmed in this boat 15 times in like the past three weeks and like 14 out of the 15 times i've filmed it's rained like half the day so having rain gear in your boat is a must i never take it out um i love it besides that I just keep like random sweatshirts, random little hoodies, random sun shirts. Like the weather changes every single day. Random visor, uh, first aid kits. Um, besides the rain gear, I keep like little totes in here for like some smaller tools, fuses. Um, I feel like if you have fuses and a first aid kit, um, you're good to go. It seems like if you spend any time in a boat at all, 
what could go wrong definitely goes wrong at some point. So anything you can have to kind of prevent breaking down or getting hurt out in the boat, that's like a must and obviously staying dry. So long and the short, that's the AVX 1980 by Vexus Boats. I can't thank the dudes in Tune Marine enough for kind of like helping me pick this boat out, customize it, help it be mine. Um, I love this sucker so much. The worst part about getting a new boat though is basically like I'm scared. I'm almost scared every time I drive it in the road. I'm almost scared every time I put it in the water. I think it's just so nice and I came from such a beater old boat. I just want to keep it really, really nice. So the worst part about having a new boat is keeping it clean and keeping it up to the standard of when you bought it because it's just so freaking beautiful getting a new boat, whether it's brand new or new to you. Uh, either way, thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the end. If you have suggestions about anything inside the boat, please comment them down below. I'd like to trick this boat out even more. And um, yeah, make sure you check the link in the description. I'll link everything I talked about today kind of down there. And um, last but not least, let's change the name of this boat. Let's rename this boat 100% brand new. So comment down names below too. And um, yeah, I guess there's nothing left to be said. And stay tuned. And as always, let the adventure be Move Oh my pretty babe. Something ain't right Got to find a way To move ahead Oh my pretty baby